Welcome to Hovenweep National Monument. This national monument, like many of the others we visited, is dedicated to the preservation of the ancestral Pueblan ruins. It is a beautiful park and a little bit out of the way. Using LiDAR technology, they believe that there are over 30,000 different villages and ruins in the area, which is mind-boggling. Also using LiDAR technology, they can see the roads that were connecting all of these different villages to each other. This particular spot was inhabited for about 700 years, and like the rest of the region, they believe that they vacated the area because of a long drought. Let's go take a look at everything that's out here. From the visitor center, you can take this mile and a half loop that takes you through many different ruins of the tower group. The trail isn't too bad, most of it's just dirt, but there are some steep sections with boulders and wooden stairs that you have to climb up and it, it can be difficult if you're not used to that kind of activity. So keep that in mind, look at the map and know where you're willing and able to walk through. This trail will pass you by the Stronghold House, the Eroded Boulder House, the Unit Type House, Tower Point, Hovenweep Castle, Square Tower, Hovenweep House, Rimrock House, and the Twin Towers. Now, this park is not just one big site. It's divided into six different units. To get to most of these, just a regular car will do. Some of them, though, if you want to get closer to the entrance and not do as much hiking, you do need a good four-wheel drive vehicle with decent clearance. This is the Cajon Pueblo. It is the most remote of the Pueblos belonging to Hovenweep National Monument. This Pueblo was used between 900 and 1300 AD, and it's, well, it's quite beautiful. Beautiful. It's awesome. There are more dwellings beneath us. We just can't get to them. From up here, you can see Ute Mountain, Shiprock, and Monument Valley. Pretty dang cool. Now on to the next sites. Welcome to the Holly Group. This behind me is the Holly Tower. They don't know how many stories it was, but it was at least two. Scaffolding was not used to build it. It was built from the inside out. Pretty wild, huh? Now that we're done at the Holly unit, let's move on to the Horseshoe unit. This unit has two different buildings. The one over there, which you won't be able to see, and then the one directly behind me is a D-shaped unit with a tower in the middle. Also over in this area, they had built up a dam for irrigating the crop. Pretty cool. Let's take a closer look. This particular dwelling is a D-shape, and you can see in the middle, there is an additional tower. Now there is no external entrance to that middle tower, so they believe that you had to have climbed onto the roof and then entered from the top. We are done at Horseshoe. Let's move on to Hackberry. The Hackberry unit is the least preserved. It didn't stand the test of time like the other ones did. However, they believe that these ruins here and the ones that didn't withstand the elements, was home to the biggest population of inhabitants during the Pueblo III period. They believed in this one particular area, 250 to 300 people resided. Now that we are done in Huckberry, let's head to our last stop in Hovenweep, which is Cutthroat Castle. This one is a more difficult one to get to. The ranger said not to go through this one with my truck. He said, all the other trails great. This one, when I see it start going down, park. And he was right. It was a pretty rough road after that. But the hike was pretty. This one is unique because instead of being built on the top of the mesas, these buildings were erected on terraces into the slope of the mountain. This one's also really cool because look, there's a boulder and underneath there is bricks and construction. And then on top there is bricks and construction as well. Another special piece about Cutthroat Castle is that it has more kivas than the rest of all the other units. Keep in mind too, as we look at this, that these weren't all used for living in. A lot of the space was used for storage as well, especially for preparing food for the winter. Like the other Pueblos we visited, they grew corn, squash, and beans. They used dry farming. And then here on the slope where the water would run, they would build terraces that would help collect water and they would farm there as well. I was helping these two guys jump their car and we were having problems with it because it was a hybrid. Well, as we're there, a um, law enforcement officer for the Bureau of Land Management stopped by to see if he could help. And while we were standing there waiting, he gave me this awesome map of the canyons of the ancient BLM land. He circled a little spot and drew a triangle to let me know of the perfect place for camping. It was tough to get to, it was out of the way, but let me know what you think. Do you think it was worth the long drive? 
I think it's well worth the long drive. The sunset from the spot that he recommended is one of the best I've ever had. Over there, you can see Monument Valley, which is way cool. You can see just all the layers of the canyons and the mountains and the rock formations, and it just goes on forever. And then this picture is just a picture of the clouds. And then this picture is also just a picture of the clouds, but it really, it lets you see the colors of it. They're not edited. I don't do that kind of thing. I didn't add more oranges or more greens or there's no green in the sunset. I didn't do anything to the colors to make it look prettier than what it actually was. That is exactly how the camera took the picture. Oh, it's just, it's a perfect spot. Ben, if you're watching from Canyons of the Ancient, thanks for the recommendation. Really appreciate it. Now, you may be wondering if I camp out and all that, how I stay clean. Well, that's easy. They sell these at Walmart. They are a five gallon water jug with a shower spout at the end. Hang it up high, leave it in the sun. It'll warm up, it'll get hot if you're not careful. You just take a shower and there's no one out here. So you get to take a shower in freedom and you can wash your hands in pots or anything else this way too. No star pictures tonight, moon is too bright. Can you see it right there behind the bushes? But I did take this gnarly picture of the moon and I'm only using a 600 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. That's uh, pretty dang cool. No stars, but killer moon and just killer sunset of Monument Valley. Like who sees this kind of stuff?